Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is using custom tracking ID in Azure Logic Apps standard. Let's go. So naturally you when you're building interfaces you need you usually need to, to track transactions and uh, there's no shortage of like IDs that exist um, inside of the Logic Apps runtime that allows you to do it. But the challenge has been how do you associate a transaction with some business context? Right, so it's always one of those things where maybe you have a, a thousand transactions and all but one were were uh, successful, but there's a business impact to that one transaction that failed, and having that business context allows you to then go ahead and address it. So typically, when we we you know talk about business context identifiers, it's usually things like order numbers, work order numbers, employee IDs, customer IDs, etc. Now, Logic Apps obviously has its own internal tracking mechanism. We've got run history. We've got something called a run uh, history ID. And basically, that's how we can go ahead and sort of find a particular instance of, uh, of a record, of a transaction that had passed. But the question is, how do we then go ahead and enrich what is already provided by Logic Apps and actually include our own business context itself? Now, the answer here is actually in your trigger there is a setting called custom tracking ID and we can go ahead and populate this value using an expression when we go ahead and do so that's where things get really interesting so number one we're gonna see this value in our run history that's gonna be a property that's now captured but if we go ahead and you know include publishing our telemetry to application insights then we're gonna be able to go ahead and actually query for that. And we can see that it almost becomes like a correlation ID itself. And so for this reason, that's why I'm saying Azure Logic App Standard, there's going to be some similar things you can do with the consumption, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you the demos and interfaces in the standard SKU itself. Okay, so let's start in the Azure portal. And I've got a workflow here, just called Custom Audit Employee. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the design. Nothing uh, too crazy. We've got uh, an HTTP trigger. We've got a compose, uh, just where we can go ahead and uh, grab this expression. This is more for demo purposes. We can then just go ahead and call an API using HTTP action, and then go ahead and provide a response itself. Now, what we want to do here is we want to be able to go ahead and extract a value from our request. Now, in this case, I'm, I've changed the default method to be a get, and we're going to go ahead and be able to like list uh, a set of employees you know, by making this specific call. Now, what we're going to do is take as an input an ID. So whatever that ID is, we want to be able to go ahead and track it. And that's gonna essentially be our custom tracking ID. And so what we can do is we can click on settings and we're gonna find this field here called custom tracking ID. And this is where I'm actually providing an expression that allows me to retrieve this ID value. Now, since this is a query parameter, it's gonna show up in this relative path parameters node and then we're good, we've got essentially an attribute called ID. And so that's why I have this compose here, is I wanted to just go ahead and sort of mess with this and test it. And then I could copy this, bring it over here, um, re remove the, there was two curly braces that were included with that. But you can use this to debug what this setting will be. Now when you go ahead and run this, and you can run this from Postman, what you're gonna find in your run history is that the value is actually now captured. So if we go ahead and click on our trigger, and then we scroll down on the right, we can see this property here called tracking ID. And so what I've done when I made this call is I passed an ID of one, because it represented employee one. If I would have gone ahead and pumped in you know, employee one, two, three, 123, um, you know, the value that would be extracted here is 123 from that perspective. Now, you might be asking, what happens if I do nothing? What value gets populated there? And it's actually the run instance ID that gets populated. 
So every single um, you know run has an ID value, right? That's what this identifier here, it's our run instance ID. And so that will be automatically populated if you don't populate something yourself. Now, if I go back and, and this is my Azure Logic Apps standard instance, right? If I go and click on Application Insights, when I went ahead and created this Logic App standard instance, I enabled Application Insights. And so right now my app is connected to an Application Insights instance called just Middle or Friday standard. And so if I head over to Application Insights, I'm now going to be able to go ahead and query based upon this information. So here I'm at my Application Insights uh, ins um, instance, and then I can go ahead and do transaction search. And when I want to go ahead and search for a particular transaction, this is where I can go ahead and use all of these different properties that exist for us. Now what we're going to find is there's a property over here called prop underscore client tracking ID. And if I go ahead and select that as my criteria, I can then go ahead and provide my value. Now in this previous instance, we talked about one. Um, if it was like one, two, three, I'd put in one, two, three. Um, but here you can see what happens when you don't have any of these values, right? That's the run instance ID that's being used. But for this purpose, we're gonna go ahead and select one. Now this was pretty interesting, I thought, as well. So you kind of have to look at this in reverse order. Uh, here was the very first sort of uh, first trace statement. And we can see that our workflow has started. We can see some additional you know, GUIDs that represent um, our overall process and all of those ideas I was talking about before. Then what ends up happening is we have all of the, um, you know, the actions that exist within our workflow. So here we've got an action. And in this case, it was that compose action and we can start to see the beginning and end time of it as well. And then same thing, you know, we can go to the next one around calling that HTTP endpoint and then calling the response. I and mean, so we can now start to see, you know, very granular information about all of this. And then finally we can go ahead and see when our workflow ends as well. And now this was happy path, but you know, if we ever wanted to figure out, you know, what exactly happened with an, like a, a process that failed, and we had that work order number or that customer number or that tracking number, shipping number, whatever, we could go ahead and as long as we're populating it, we can easily go ahead and query for it. And so when you're dealing with a lot of interfaces at scale, um, you know, it becomes a needle in a, in a haystack. So how do you go ahead and find it? This is one way of, of doing it itself. Now, one last thing just to talk about is uh, in my scenario, I had used that relative path. Now, it doesn't have to be like part of my, say, get in this case. If I had, say, a post that was being used, or even if I had a message from, say, service bus, I could just go ahead and figure out the expression for the value that I'm interested in. Basically, as long as I can go ahead and fetch a value based upon some sort of expression from my message that's inbound, then I'll be in good shape. And, and so that's also important here as well. And then, you know, certainly when you can get into scenarios where you've got some sort of like canonical schemas, this becomes even easier. Um, if you do have, you know, almost like an envelope type approach, but um, you know, mileage will vary based upon the endpoint and based upon what you're doing, but you've got a lot of flexibility here as well. So use that compose action, do your debugging, find out exactly the, the right sort of JSON path to your data. And then once you have it, go ahead, apply it to your trigger and that will get injected. And as you can see, I didn't have to go ahead and modify any of these other actions for it to be tracked. It all gets linked automatically for us because of what the, what's in a, the Logic Apps runtime already.